Let's get it. absolutely gorgeous day here in the Carolinas and I'm so glad to see it. Thank the Most High for this day. I have a real quick thought I want to share and it is don't sweat the small stuff. Obedience is the key. Don't sweat the small stuff. Obedience is the key. And our script is 2 Kings 3 and 18. And this is a small thing in the sight of the Most High. Moreover, he will deliver also Moab into your hands. And this is, of course, the story when the king was facing an attack. Ahab's son, Jerome, Jeram, he began to rule over Israel in the 18th year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. And those fellows were, were under attack. War between Israel and Moab is the heading of the script during 2 Kings and 3. And he called over some help. So he asked Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and the king of Eden to help him fight against this coming war. And all three armies traveled along a roundabout route through the wilderness for seven days, but there was no water for the men or their animals. So the king of Israel cried out, the Most High has brought the three of us here to let the King of Moab defeat us. But King, King Jehoshaphat of Judah asked, Is there no prophet of the Most High with us? If there is, we can ask the Most High what to do through him. See, there's the key right there. When you're in trouble, you must go to your help. <laughs> I think we said this in the prior recording. When you're in trouble or in doubt about your situation or about what's attacking you, go to the Most High for help. You say, how do I do that, Robert? I don't see him, I don't hear him, I don't know that he's even real. By faith, he's real. I wouldn't be up here talking about him if he weren't real. But you have to call on him and continuously call on him and he'll meet you. See, there's no doubt about the Most High hearing your heart's cry. He'll come and see about you. I know for sure. One of the king's, one of King Joram's officers replied, Elijah, son of Shaphat, is here. He used to be Elijah's personal assistant. Jehoshaphat said, yes, the Most High speaks through him. So the king of Israel King Jehoshaphat of Judah and the king of Edom went, went to consult with Elijah. Why are you coming to me? Elijah asked the king of Israel. Go to the pagan prophets of your father and mother. But King Jerome of Israel said no, for it was the Most High who called us three kings here only to be defeated by the king of Moab. See, he was speaking in doubt. See, now he knew the Most High called them there. He knew it was the Most High's hand that called them to that place. Oh boy. And see, my wife and I was just speaking on this situation about how sometimes the Most High will set you up for what seems to be a bad situation. Oh boy. But he, in fact, is working that thing for your good if you would just walk in obedience and don't sweat the small stuff. See, everything we see in our emotions, we see it as the most horrific, 
most impossible thing ever in our lives. Just as I said in the prior recording, we look at situations as the valley of the shadow of death is infinite, eternal. It's never gonna end, but it does. And we come out on the other side, shining like gold and pockets full of gold, <laughs> hallelujah. The most high is faithful. See, that's the point I'm getting to through our obedience. See, he's faithful, but what about you? Are you gonna be faithful to him? Mm, mm, mm. Elijah replied, as surely as the Most High lives whom I serve, I wouldn't even bother with you for, except for my respect for King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Now bring me someone who can play the harp. Oh boy, mm, my goodness. I just heard um, TCA, or Thoughts Camera Action, TCA just did a recording about frequencies. And he was like, there is a way to play music or speak a thing into the atmosphere and change it. And he gave the example of um, David playing for Saul, playing the harp for Saul. Praise the Most High. This is just simple confirmation. And this was this morning. So the text goes on to say, while the harp was being played, the power of the Most High came upon Elijah. And he said, this is what the Most High says. This dry valley will be filled with pools of water. Oh boy. See, that's where we're at today. We're in dry places. We're in places of misunderstanding the Most High's voice because he's always leading us into all truth. But at times, he leads us down through that valley, which we say, that's not of him. That's not of him. He couldn't have orchestrated this, but he did. He did. And see, David is the prime example. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I would fear no evil. See, we're looking at situations as if they're evil, but he's actually leading us through that valley to green pastures and to still waters. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will see neither wind nor rain, says the Most High, but this valley will be filled with water. See, and what that's telling me is we're not going to see the usual suspects in our deliverance. Oh, boy. And a lot of times we're looking to the wind, we're looking to the, the rain, and in people. See, we're looking to other folks to deliver us out of what only the Most High can do for us which it says in the, today's text, it's a simple thing to him, a small thing. You will have plenty for yourselves and your cattle and other animals, but this is only a simple thing for the Most High, our text, for he will make you victorious over the army of Moab. You will conquer the best of their, their towns, even the fortified ones, you will cut down all their good trees, stop up all their springs, and ruin all the good land with stones. Hallelujah. The next day, at about the time when the morning sacrifice was offered, water suddenly appeared. It was flowing from the direction of Edom, and soon there was water everywhere. Meanwhile, while the, meanwhile, when the people of Moab heard about the three armies marching against them, they mobilized every man who was old enough to strap on the sword, and they stationed themselves along the border. But when they got up the next morning, the sun was shining across the water, making it appear red to the Moab, Mo, Mo, Moabites. It's blood, the Moabites exclaimed. The three armies must have attacked and killed each other. Let's go, men of Moab, and collect the plunder. Oh boy, see how the Most High sets your enemy up? When you think, in fact, that you're set up for the downfall, for the downfall. But when the Moabites arrived at the Israelite camp, the army of Israel rushed out and attacked them until they turned and ran. The army of Israel chased them into the land of Moab, destroying everything as they went. 
And the text goes on to say, we won't read it. They got what the most I said they would get. He did exactly what he said he was gonna do. But it was through their obedience to listening to the prophet. See, if I'm not mistaken, King Joseph, Jehoshaphat had history with the Most High. That's why Elisha said that he would give them an audience simply because of Jehoshaphat's history with the Most High. See, and that comes with walking with, walking with your Elohim humbly. Only doing what he says to do, only doing what you see him say, see and hear him say. And see, that's through the visions he shows you and his voice whispering in your ear through the Ruach Akadosh. And to him, it's all small. There's nothing hard for the Most High. It's, it appears hard because we're looking at it in our eye, in our own eye. What we're doing is believing the report, and it's a false report. And once again, obedience is the key. Only do what he tells us to do. And then don't sweat the small stuff. Even though it seems like a mountain, he's given us mountain crushing faith, or mountain moving faith, as the text says. He says we can move the mountain. Praise the Most High, that's gonna be my time. I love y'all. I hope this quick word will be able to help somebody as it helped me this morning. Don't sweat the small stuff. Obedience is the key. Stay up, keep pushing forward in the right direction. Shalom.